Hey guys, welcome back. Carter Bits be tripping. This is going to be a real quick one. I promise you. I always say that and then it ends up being like a 20 minute video. This is going to be quick. This is a, a box that a friend had that stopped working and it came to realize, I, I came to realize that we haven't done one on how to repair. We, we were just talking about new machines. We haven't done one on like repairing a rig or trying to identify what's wrong with the rig. So I actually don't know what's wrong with this yet. And what we're going to do is go through kind of a multi-step process to try to l figure out first what's going on. So uh, the, one of the steps that we'll go through, we'll walk with you, or each step that we go through, we'll walk with you guys on it, try to keep it clear and concise, and have you uh, a quick video that you can troubleshoot your rigs if something stops working. So before we get into that, we're going to take you guys to our today's sponsor, and then we'll get into this. Today's sponsor is ASIC Jungle one of the largest providers of new and used ASICs. Their target audience is medium to larger mining farms, looking to add some extra units to their stack, but also has some interesting retail options for smaller buyers. ASIC Jungle also has a dedicated OTC desk that provides a concierge-like service for larger orders. This is to help manage expectations on larger order requests. While ASIC batch supplies are limited, and as ASIC Jungle continuously updates their inventory, they are ready to get on the phone with you and discuss your potential order. In the crypto world, this is rare, but a fabulous feature. If this sounds what you're currently looking for, drop by the site or give them a call. Tell them Bitsby Trippin sent you. So welcome back, guys. So one of the very first things you do, so I, I, like I just got this rig here is you got to boot it up and see what's happening. So this has simple mining OS running on it right now. We're going to get it plugged in and we're going to fire up and see what it's actually doing right now. Now, anytime I've fixed rigs before, most of the time, like anybody that you, if you take it to a shop or something like your car or something, and I plug it in, if it starts working, we're still going to go through the basic process of what you would do if certain things happen. So what I'm going to try to do is keep a very organized layout of particular issues and we'll make sure that we have links below in chapters so you can skip to how to fix certain things like that but that's what today's video is is a noob guide to fixing your mining rig and things to look forward to um, as you as you run into issues how do you fix them so let's go to the first step so we're live we got the machine on we turn it on haven't done anything swear to god haven't looked at anything only thing i always do and you said it just a second ago, you always check the risers first. So the first thing I do whenever I you know, this machine got transported over here, I wanted to make sure that all the risers during tra any kind of transport with these things, the risers get loose. So we just check the risers. We made sure everything is connected. So the memory that's in this machine, make sure it's seated correctly. Make sure the risers are down on the board. Make sure all the connections are just plugged in. So that was the first step. And then we boot it up. And right now it is actually running, but we're going to go through here in a second and walk you guys through. We're going to actually change something too, because I noticed the risers on this machine are the old style. They're using the SATA connection. Okay. Which we should be using the six pin connections on a lot of these risers, the newer risers. So we're going to be doing that. But right now this thing is running at about 30. One card that's slacking like, uh, we get about 8.9 mega hash. I don't know, something on that card. The other two, these are all three the same GPUs. They're the Asus strict edition of the 574 gig GPU. So Asus strict edition, the 574 gig. So they cannot mine Ethereum because they don't have eight, they don't have at least five gigs of memory, which most of the your GPUs usually go in four, six, or eight gig. Right. Um, so these cannot mine Ethereum, but it looks like we just have that one that's behaving weirdly. And that's probably the BIOS that's on these. These are older GPUs. And this is one point that I'm going to try to make to you guys very, very, very first. Like this can apply to as people start to capitulate when they see the prices, they're not making as much money. They, they're worried about Ethereum moving on. And they may, I, I have a three or four card rig and they might be like, dude, I'm out. I'm selling it. I'm out. Right. Some of these GPUs, especially the Polaris edition could have different BIOSes. The things that are running, it's like the driver that's on the, on the card itself. It's right. And those are things that you would normally update and change back in the day before the miners were able to be configured to where you didn't need to do that anymore. Well, looking at this particular output, 
it's showing me that there's an inconsistency, even though these are the same cards. So what I would end up doing is to test this very quickly. Like if you didn't have to, if you didn't know how to identify which one, you could literally just go to one GPU each, like, you know, to take two of the drivers off, reboot this and find the card that's having, you know, that's giving you the result. There's other tools like on Simple Mining's OS where they have this thing called identify the GPU. Um, yeah. Hive OS also has this where you can set the fans. It'll it'll just spin the fans to 100% on the card. So if you say, show me card number one, it'll, it'll just, and you'll know which one it is. Right. So then you can say, okay, that's the card that I need to get the BIOS fixed on this. And it's, that would be a good video. I think we don't have, I've, I've stayed away from showing people how to do BIOS updates now because you don't need to, but there is a rare case like this where the card already has a BIOS on it and it's affecting the performance of the card now. So you can actually go out there and make a change to it. You can still see, I mean, we're, if yeah. we go back to that, you, for the people that may not be fully tracking here, um, we go to this screen here, you can see on the screen, these are supposed to be the same cards and you have one card performing like eight mega hash, the rest of them are doing 12. So you're gonna want the consistency there. So it, what we would end up doing is find the card that has the bad BIOS on it, we would find a card with a good BIOS on it and we would just copy, clone that BIOS off of that. Yeah. And then update the BIOS on that card that is causing the issue. Um, that That's its own video. That could be a 10 minute video in itself on how to do that. Um, with Hive OS, they make it super easy and we might use Hive OS for that because Hive OS allows you to save the BIOS off of a good card like that and then push the BIOS to the other card all through the interface. Where like in Windows, you have to do some things and it's a pain in the butt. So we'll use that for a Hive OS update. I will show you how to restore a card to an original BIOS. That way you can let the miners do their thing. So that's your first thing. So we've identified here that the machine's stable, it's running. Um, if you had a reboot or you were missing cards, one of the very first things you wanna do is replace your, your riser. Always buy extra risers. So if you're building a six card mining rig, eight card mining rig, buy like 10 risers, have extra risers. The, the GPU risers.com box, the orange one right there. We'll grab one of those. Have an extra risers. Uh, There's a shameless plug for your GPU risers.com. They did send over some new risers for us a while back and we're using them here. I'm gonna pull one out there. Um, now they're using, I think this is, you can see what the version that is. Let's say that's like the version 10 or 11. It's a newer, uh, a newer one. We'll show you guys a close up of this here in a second. Uh, I mean, these have been okay. The ones that I've replaced, uh, some of the longest standing riders that I've had is version six and version seven. So if you're ordering on like Amazon, don't fear if you get like an older, like version six or seven, there's some of the best risers actually ever. Uh, they've had good reliability all the way from 2016 to now but um, having a couple extra are, are key piece. So we're gonna switch all three of these out. We'll take you guys quickly through that process. And then the other piece, like I said, if it's a Polaris card from AMD and it has a bad BIOS, switching that out is another way to do that. Also um, making sure like, another key factor you need to check into is on the motherboards. If you have more than a couple cards, like if you have an issue where you have your GPUs plugged in, seem like everything was working. You go to boot it back up, nothing displays. You have a no display type of issue. The number one culprit on that usually is, is something's probably happened to the BIOS on the motherboard and it's reset its settings. And the problem is, is if the motherboard gets its settings reset, that more than likely means that the, the settings in the motherboard uh, being 4G decoding is turned off. If that's the case, then it will not allow the motherboard to boot up with a whole bunch of GPUs plugged into it. It only supports two to three GPUs max. And then after that 4G decoding has to be turned on. Uh, from a stability standpoint, you wanna have your PCI Express slot set to one X or two X, uh, whatever the settings you have in your board, also from a stability standpoint. So those are two other big key things. We'll make sure that we have links to another video for you guys on that, that I've already covered in, in very grave detail on how to get in there and update your motherboard settings. But always have go by a basic principle of start with the leanest uh, start possible. 
fix a riser with one GPU, get it working, get it running, get it boot up, make sure it's mining, then add in other GPUs. If you're an impatient person, make sure your 4G decoding's turned on, replace your risers, and then plug them all in, and maybe it just works out of the gate and saves you time. Most people are impatient and they'll do that first, but just from like an iterative standpoint, that's the way you'd wanna do it. Uh, other things that impact you is if you're right at the threshold of your power supply. So like in this machine here, this has a P100 or a P1000 uh, EVGA 1000 P2 to be exact. If this machine was fully filled out with like six GPUs and it did not have the right settings, six GPUs on 10 on 570s like this will use up to 1100 watts power. So it'd be exceeding this power supply. There's a chance that like if your settings aren't or you're, you lose configuration on your settings, that it starts pulling too much power. And then it just shuts the machine off. So power is a huge culprit. Risers are huge culprits. Configurations also throw you off if you're pushing too much memory. Or even sometimes, and especially in the newer GPUs, if you are just using stock settings. Because stock settings run the cards pretty hot, put enough of them together, you end up having issues. So dropping your cores down, on a lot of the newer like AMD line cards, the 6000 series, like the 6700, 6800, 68, or 6900 XTs, bringing those cores down to 1400 watts from their native like 1630 um, or higher. And then their memory just set there at like 2050 to 2100. You put those like that, you're gonna have a lot more stable settings on like those newer cards. Same thing with the Nvidia cards, bringing the cores down some, bringing your power limits down to about 80% on most all the entire 3000 series line will help you keep a stable rig, keep your power settings down, not overstress your power. So those are all big key factors on replacing your, uh, you're getting some, some consistency there. But we're at almost 10 minutes. We got a working machine here. We're gonna, sh we're gonna uh, wrap this one up by showing you guys some, just some quick, uh, overview of replacing some of the stuff with this rig and some of the stats of this rig and then we'll catch you guys on the next one where i think ray's going to build his own his own rig so yeah. we're going to put together i'm going to have ray do it and then we'll be walking through that process as he builds that rig so let's see if these 10 episodes of the noob series has resonated with you of just sitting next to here and what you guys see what you guys see is what you get on this week we actually just have been doing a lot of it just here and we've been going and doing other stuff. So his knowledge is essentially wrapped up in about these almost 10 hours worth of content because each of these have been almost an hour. So about nine hours of content of learning the stuff of talking through it. So hopefully you guys like this series and yeah, you guys are subscribing and sharing and we'll catch you guys on the next one.